developing tolerance or actually promoting a gay agenda. Anti-bullying legislation has come under fire from one Christian group. Focus on the Family accuses gay rights groups of promoting homosexuality by supporting anti-bullying programs. We want to bring in both sides on this issue. Eliza Bayard is with the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network and Candy Cushman is with Focus on the Family. I want to thank both of you for joining me this morning. Candy, I want to start with you. Focus on the Family is, is accusing gay rights groups of, of using tolerance and anti-bullying programs to introduce curricula and books into schools that promote same-sex marriage. When it's really, some people would say this is just about having kids be safe and not be bullied. So, so why, Candy, do you say that, um, that it's something else? Well, first, I just want to make clear that we absolutely think every child, no matter who they are, should be protected from bullying because we know the data shows that kids are being targeted as never before by bullies nowadays for a myriad of reasons, whether it be maybe they struggle with their weight, um, they wear glasses, maybe they're developing a little faster than their peers, and maybe they identify as gay and lesbian. So we think all of these kids should be protected without exception. But we think this is best done through a non-political, a bullying prevention policy that gives widespread protection to all kids against bullying for any reason whatsoever. Uh, the problem is we've seen that when this issue becomes politicized, parents are losing their parental rights a lot of times. And just to give you one example, a school board in Alameda, California, used a law just like the one that's being proposed to mandate homosexuality teaching for kids as young as kindergarten. Their parents were told they could not opt out their kids from this teaching, even if it Con, uh, conflicted with their family's deeply held religious beliefs, or maybe they, ju they just didn't think their child was ready to handle it at that age, at kindergarten or first grade. And so what we're saying is that parental rights should be respected, this should not be a federal mandate, and local schools should have the freedom to develop the best policy that they think is necessary for, to protect kids with parental input. And Eliza, why, why do you feel like that, that this is something that's, uh, that, that's being targeted? Well, actually, Thomas, uh, Candy and I absolutely agree. The only difference we have is that Candy, I, I don't know, Candy, if you've actually read the Safe Schools Improvement Act because it actually achieves all the goals she's talked about. Frankly, you know, last year I wrote three condolence letters to families who had lost their children to anti-gay bullying. And I owe it to them to fight for uh, policies that work. The Safe Schools Improvement Act would protect all young people and then specifically add language that uh, references bias-based bullying and harassment of all kinds, including religion, race, national origin, sexual orientation, um, because this is a policy that works. Research shows that bullying of all kinds is reduced when this kind of policy is in place. I also need to make a very important point about another parental perspective on this issue. Uh, Candy, you seem to suggest that any discussions of the lives of lesbians and gay men in schools would be inappropriate. Well, here's the thing. My daughter will go back to kindergarten on Wednesday, and her actual first assignment is to bring a photograph of her family. And discussions of students' families will be the entire first unit of her kindergarten curriculum. My daughter happens to have two moms. so. The school has actually introduced this topic. And the fact is, according to the American Bar Association, that there are 7 to 10 million children out there, just like my daughter, who have lesbian or gay parents. Um, and schools themselves are talking about the family. And I simply ask that my family gets the same respect and recognition as anyone else's. And so, Candy, can you agree with Eliza on that point? Well, I agree that her child should have all the free expression she needs to talk about her family. But what we're trying to talk about are when parents are faced with mandated homosexuality lessons, again, for kids as young as kindergarten, against their will. And this is how this law was used in California. But what if Eliza's if daughter was then persecuted? Law, but wait, what if Eliza's daughter was then made fun of in school because she was honest about who her parents are? Do you think that 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 she should have any rights for any protection from kids that would bully her because she has two moms? 
Uh, absolutely. I think that should be stopped right away. I believe all kids should be protected, no matter how they identify. Um, but you've got to keep in mind what a big picture this is. You know, there were statistics that just came out this summer showing that kids who struggle with obesity are 65% more likely to be bullied. And then you have this tragic situation also in Massachusetts. The young woman, Phoebe Prince, who committed suicide after extensive mm -hmm. cyberbullying. And that case didn't have anything, you know, in that case to do with homosexuality. It was more schoolgirl je uh, school jealousies that developed into extended cyberbullying. And so we're just saying, look at the widespread nature of this problem, and we need to develop policies at the school level that reflect how widespread it is and not just um, only focus on one segment of it. Eliza, what's the, what's the likelihood this legislation will go? Well, Thomas, just uh, I, I have great hopes for the Safe Schools Improvement Act. We have a remarkable array of support, including the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, the American Association of School Administrators, uh, nearly 70 national education, uh, youth service, and human and civil rights groups stand with us. And I think, Candy, again, I would ask you to read the legislation, because it actually refers to uh, the kind of bullying and harassment that Phoebe Prince faced as well. It's about the full range of bullying behavior Behaviors that all concerned adults agree are absolutely unacceptable in our schools. I also want to point out, Candy, that there was a case in Louisiana where a young man came in to talk about his family, a, a kid in kindergarten actually, who came to school and told his parents that he had two moms and that his mothers were lesbians. He was actually disciplined and suspended for using quote unquote bad language at school, and he was just talking about his family. So let's please remember the real Real lives that are affected here. Um, Candy, you keep talking about, you know, the mandated teaching of homosexuality. What this is about is school communities recognizing the real world that's out there and who we all are as Americans. We all go to school. We want the same things for our children. I'm fighting for the same things for everyone else's child. I want everyone to be safe, mm -hmm. respected, and free to learn. Uh, Eliza Byard with Glisten and Candy Kush from A Focus on the Family. I think that we've come to the major consensus here that we all agree our kids should be safe in school and as we go back to school we should probably sit down and remind our kids that bullying just isn't cool. I want to thank both of you ladies for joining me here today on MSNBC. Thank you so much Thomas. A pleasure to be with thank you. Thank you Thomas. Take care. Jordan Vandersloat is talking again and this time to a website in his latest interview.